In this tutorial, we will learn how to boost realism in Evi with a simple scene first, then, I will show you how to apply those techniques on more larger projects. Let us go inside the mesh to see what's going on. The scene contain a sun lamp which cast this light inside the room, and while the walls are placed on the floor exactly, you still see some light coming through, this is what we call a light bleed. I did put the world sky on black to make the problem more clear. So, to fix this case, we first need to add some thickness to the walls, you do that with the solidify modifier, once you add it to the mesh, make sure to enable even thickness, and then, Increase the thickness value in it, until you get rid of the light bleed. If you can't use more thickness in some cases, and the bleed is still exist, what you can do is select the light source, and in its settings, under the shadows, experiment with the bias, a value of 0.2 should work fine. After that, if you still have the problem, like here in this wall, I recommend increasing the thickness by a small amount, a centimeter or two should do the trick, I did also turn on high bit depth in the shadow render settings. So, as we said before, you can increase the thickness a bit, something won't even make a difference, and the problem gone. You can also select the sun lamp, and in the shadow settings, turn on contact shadows, what this option do is adding an extra layer of shadows over the original one, and for me I don't like using it, so I don't recommend it, it's simply not realistic. So now that we fix the light bleed, let us add a sky, an HDRI sky map and make sure to align it with the sun lamp. We might need to rotate the sun a bit. So. What can we do to make this more realistic? Well, first, jump to the render settings and turn on space reflections. You can now see the interior mesh reflecting on this metal ball. After that, go to the add menu and look for the light probe, inside it you can see three options, first we will add the irradiance volume, it looks like two cubes inside one another, and with it, we can calculate the light rays and produce a dynamic light inside the area needed, also with this one, placing it right is the key. You need to make sure the inner cube is inside your walls, so take your time and scale it right. Once you're done with that, we need to bake the light for the effect to show, from the render settings, go to indirect lighting and hit bake light, turning the view to solid mode will make the baking process faster. And here it is, 
as you see it make quite the difference, if you have any problem after baking the light, you might need to rescale the irradiance volume and rebake it again. Now, to the next light probe, the reflection cube map, with this one the process is easy, just add it and scale it to cover the entire scene you working on. Once you done that, hit big cube map only to see the result. And here it is, this looks way better than just enabling the space reflections, the entire room now is showing on the ball reflection. Last but not least is the reflection plane, for this one I will make a face on the floor and assign to it a glossy material to make it reflective. Now as you see, we can see the reflection on it but it's not that good, what we can do in this situation is adding a reflection plane over this face scale it to cover the area, and just move it on the z-axis until the reflection pops up. And see the difference here with the reflection plane, it's quite handy with mirror, water surface and even interior floors, now that we are finished with the methods, let us see a bigger example on it. So, I did make this scene a couple months ago. Go watch it if you want the link in the description. I did add all the light probes to this scene and it's ready for baking. And I have them here turned off. So first, on the water surface, I added a reflection plane, here it is, the arrow should point up, and if we turned it off and on, you can see the difference clearly. Next in line is the irradiance volume, I added two of them, first one to cover the entire scene, with the default value for the resolution. The second irradiance volume is inside the room, and I increased the resolution to 6 on all axes. And finally the reflection cube, I added it over the entire scene, and that's it. Let us bake it to see the difference. And again, switching to solid mode will make the baking faster. And here it is. The last steps to boost the realism in your scene is with the render settings. Turn on ambient occlusion and bloom. In the volumetric, put the tile size on 4 and enable volumetric shadows, for this last one we might need to rebake to see the effect. Finally in the color management, make the look on any of the contrast options. The mid-high contrast works fine most of the times, and that's it for this tutorial, stay sharp guys, goodbye.